So far we've been studying functions of one variable. You conceptualize that, for instance, by y equals f of x. But now we need to consider functions of two variables, for example, z equals f of x and y. And we're not going to be discussing marginals and averages of such functions, but we do need to figure out how to graph them. So with an example, suppose z equals 100 minus x squared minus y squared. One way to study this is to use a table. x, y, and z. So for example, if x is 0 and y is 0, then z is 100 minus 0 squared minus 0 squared, which is 100 minus 0 minus 0 which is 100. If x is 5 and y is 0, then z is 100 minus 5 squared minus 0 squared, which is 100 minus 25 minus 0, which is 75. If x is 0 and y is 5, then we'd have 100 minus 0 squared minus 5 squared, which is, again is going to be 75. And similarly, if we had negative 5 and 0, we'd have 75, or if we had 0, negative 5, we'd have 75. <coughs> uh, let's, do, let's do plus or minus 10 and 0. If x is either plus 10 or minus 10, it doesn't matter, then x squared is 100. So we'd have 100 minus 100 minus 0, which is 0. And if x is 0 and y was either plus or minus 10, then we'd have 100 minus 0 squared minus either positive 10 squared or negative 10 squared, but either way it's 100, and so that would be 0. Now one way to graph this is to graph it in three dimensions. So for example, we'd have the z-axis coming out like this. The x-axis here. And the y-axis coming coming towards you, coming out of the plane, of, coming out of the xz plane, out of the plane of the screen. And uh, it's illustrated like this. So the first point now, the, of course, you have the negative x-axis that goes back this way and the negative y-axis that goes this way. We're not going to talk much about that. We're going to talk about the positive orthant, which is where x is 0 and y is 0. So, I mean, I'm sorry, where x is positive and y is positive. So let's start out with, um, with the first point here, x equals 0, y equals 0, z equals 100. So x equals 0 means no motion left or right y equals 0 means no motion towards you, that is, um, uh, outside, uh, towards you versus, uh, in relation to the screen, nor no motion behind the screen, and, and 100 units up, so maybe this is 100, so that would be, that would be that point. The, the next four points here have a height of 75, so let's mark that. 75. The first one is 5 units on the x-axis. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. No units on the y-axis, and so no units towards you or away from you, and 75 units up. So we mark that like this. The next point is, that is this one here, is x equals 0, so no units left or right. y equals 5, so 5 units towards you, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 75 units up. And the way that is sketched is this way, okay, like so. Now I won't draw the negative 5, 0, or the 0, negative 5, uh, let's go ahead to, to draw these these last two. So 
Second to the last line, x is positive 10, y is 0, z is 0, so 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 units in the x direction, no units in the y direction, and 0 units for z, so we're right at 0 here. And then the last line with positive numbers, y is x, I'm sorry, x is x is 0, y is 10, z is 0, so 6, 7, 8, 10 units in the y direction, no units in the x direction, so no units left to right, and zero units in the in the z direction. Now what this thing looks like is is something like a a, a cone with a tip that's smooth, not sharp, so it doesn't look exactly like an ice cream cone, which is upside down. So one way to 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 finish up this sketch is something like this. In the xy plane, it's going to trace a, a, a circle with radius 10. So we got something like that. Uh, it, at the height of z equals 75, we have something like this. And so that's roughly what this what the positive orthant looks like. And then you then it's symmetric around the z-axis, so you have to think about twirling this around the z-axis to to get a picture of, of what the whole thing looks like. Now it does go below the xy plane, so the thing goes goes down deeper and keeps on going, but I'm not going to sketch that because this is uh, difficult to sketch. And indeed, this is so difficult to sketch that if I had to use this kind of technique every time we had a function of two variables, I'd be in trouble. So we're going to use a different way of sketching these kind of uh, functions. And it involves changing perspective. The perspective that I've used in the graph that I've just shown you is basically the perspective of somebody who's sitting at a large value of x, a large value of y, and sort of a moderate value of z, and looking towards this object. I'm going to now take a it's the same object, but a different perspective. I'm going to take the perspective of somebody who's sitting on the z-axis. If you think of the z-axis like a flagpole, there's somebody sitting on the top of the flagpole looking down. Well, such a person would see the x-axis and see the y-axis, but wouldn't see the z-axis because the, the z-axis is 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 the flagpole, and so if you're right on the flagpole and you look down, you can't see the flagpole, especially if the flagpole has a diameter of zero, which is what what mathematical axes have. So let's see what this looks like. You first ask, where are all the points that have a z value of 100? And you can see there's only one point. It's at x equals zero, y equals zero, here that has a z value of 100. So I mark x equals 0, y equals 0, and z equals 100. Next I want to ask, what are all the values where z is 75? You can think of that as taking, uh, taking a three-dimensional object and at a height of 75, looking at um, thinking about a, a plane that's parallel to the xy plane, so parallel to the floor, but it's at a height of 75, and asking where does that cut this object? And it cuts this object along along this line here. It's a it's a circle with radius five. So on the right hand diagram, one two three four five. What I'd have is a circle with radius five. And those are all the points where z equals seventy five. Now, how about all the points where z equals 0, because that's the only other z value that I've got on the table. Well, with z equals 0, you're asking, take a plane that's parallel to the floor, and it's actually on the floor, at a height of, at a, at a height of 0 right here. Where does, what kind of shape does it make when it intersects this object? Well, it, it makes this sort of, this is uh, one quarter of the shape that it, it makes basically a circle with radius 10. So you have 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So if I draw a circle with radius 10, that's the location of all the points that 
have an axis, a z axis value of 0. Now, what happens if you didn't have the, the, uh, the first diagram I drew, but you just had this, this right hand diagram? The way to visualize a three dimensional object is to start with the z equals 100 point and pop it above the screen by 100 units. Then look at the z equals 75 set of points and pop it above the screen, but only by 75 units, not by 100. Then take the last one, the, the z equals 0 set of points, and leave those on the plane of the screen. And in that way, you can reconstruct what this three-dimensional object looks like. These the circular lines are, in other words, the lines that show all the values of x and y that give a particular value of z have a name. They're called contour lines. So I've drawn a contour line here. This is another contour line. This is another contour line. Now the third one is just actually a point. It's it's yeah, it's just a point. It's not a circle or a curve or anything. But we'd still call it a contour line. It's certainly even though it's not a line. So uh, contour lines show all the values of x and y that give rise to the same value of z, whether that value is zero or seventy-five or hundred or or anything you want. So we'll be using this contour line mechanism to sketch the, the graphs of functions of two variables.